in a controlled demolition. All right, so you believe that the buildings came down in a controlled demolition, right? Well, I don't believe it. I've looked at the evidence, I mean, right, and the evidence is overwhelming. All right, the evidence is overwhelming to you because you're sure a conspiracy nut, but, no, you know, actually, all, all of you, aside. I ask your viewers to take... Okay. Now, in this one, I'm sure you caught the obvious part, but you probably did not catch the neuro-linguistic programming. What exactly is neuro-linguistic programming? Simply put, it's dual meaning that is speaking to the subconscious. Now, of course, he's shaping public opinion by saying, it's obvious to you because you are a conspiracy nut. Well, remember now, people are very phobic of being called anything that goes against the norm. So if you agree with him, oh, then you're a nut and people, you know, they can't escape their own ego. So that's used to shape him. What you probably didn't catch is him saying, but, you know, putting that all aside, this is neuro-linguistic programming. Now, pay attention here. You're a conspiracy nut, but putting that all aside, what that is doing is he's directing your subconscious mind and your conscious mind to store that label, that impression of him. Put it aside. Keep that. It's called anchoring in neuro-linguistic programming because I've watched a little bit of it. I didn't need to watch it to pick up on how they do this, but it allows you to get some of their terminology down. They call this anchoring. Anchoring a thought, anchoring a concept, anchoring a feeling. Putting all of that aside means put that aside in your mind. He's a conspiracy nut. Do you see how they manipulate you? That's a, a very good lesson right there in neuro-linguistic programming. All right, the evidence is overwhelming to you because you're sure a conspiracy nut. But, no, you know, actually all, all of you, aside. I ask your viewers to take a look at this evidence for themselves. They can go to uh, st911.org. Uh, That's all right, you got for 9-11 Truth. Take a look. Take a look at the, the, uh, uh, at the demolitions. I know you Morgan think Reynolds, the smartest guy former the, Bush I administration the guy official. Okay, that's pretty obvious. You see how he's treating him. Very nonchalant, irritated, bored. And I know you think you're the smartest guy in the world. This is, you know, the, the typical you're a know-it-all type of comment. If you watch that David Icke video where he goes back on Wogan, he draws attention to the same thing. Where he said, whoa, that's a cheap shot when he said, uh, you know it all. And the response was accurate. I'm not saying a know-it-all. Uh, but people are trained to hate people who, quote, know it all. Why? Because they want you to be dumb. That's why in society you have catchphrases that go around that people use, like, you think too much, you're too deep, you know it all. These have all become derogatory terms in this new Orwellian society. Haven't you noticed that? His response is petty and childish, but he means to be this way. It does nothing, it addresses nothing. He can't think of anything to say in response to the professor, so he has to take a cheap shot like this. I know you think you're the smartest guy in the world. That should be obvious to you, that that is just overdoing it, creating, manifesting an insult, just again for one reason and one reason only, to disrupt his thinking and to program your mind on how to view him. Take a look at here's the, the uh, at the demolition. I know you Morgan think Reynolds, the, the former the, Bush administration the official, the official world, says here's that the, the, the Bush administration the blew the are, World Trade Center to kingdom come. That's a direct quote right. from a member of the Bush administration itself. They I know. blew and there the were World Trade that Center said that to the kingdom Jews come. The Jews were told to leave. Well, we've heard a lot of these sick, bizarre theories. That's and I okay. So suddenly he's an anti-Semite. When did that come about? I didn't hear him say anything about the Jews. What he's doing here is he's trying to link him to anti-Semitism. That's what they want to do. Now, anybody that's really trying to speak the truth in this world has no interest in focusing on a group or even an individual. What they try to focus on is the problem in general, outside of any group or individual that may be manifesting the symptoms of the problem. But again, what he's trying to do here is, in your mind, link the professor to being part of a hate group, someone that's going to target a group or an individual and make you link the terms sick and bizarre to the professor. He didn't say anything about the Jewish community. Nothing. So catch that. See how he's trying to link the professor to it. The World Trade Center to Kingdom Come. That's a direct quote right. from a member of the Bush administration itself. They I know. Blew and there the were World people Trade that Center said that the Kingdom Jews Come. were told to leave. Well, we've heard a lot of these sick, bizarre theories. That's and not I don't the believe same any thing. of them. But you're allowed that's to believe what you want. But that's not what's at hand here. 
Okay, now another thing, just to make you aware, again, of just how much they're programming your mind. To you, it looks like a man that said that's not the issue at hand here. You need to start learning their language. Their language is dual meaning, which goes hand in hand with neural linguistic programming. The issue at hand here, what he's doing is directing the professor to look at his hand. Now, why would he have the professor look at his hand? Well, if you look at his hand right now, you see it is what you've been told is the OK sign, right? Well, let's show you what it really means. The OK symbol, as you see right here, means 666. For some reason, 666 has some sort of control over the mind. Now, it could have something to do with the beast computers many of you have read about. It's sorcery. It is putting a hex on somebody. It is subconscious symbolism that somehow affects some people. It doesn't affect everybody. But he's using that, and he was directing the professor to look at his hand to use sorcery on him. It's not that one thing will work. They try to use as many combinations of things as they can. But that is a symbol, and it means 666. And that is why he told him to look at his hand, or the issue at hand here told his mind subconsciously to look at his hand. Do you see? And that is what just occurred there. That's not what's at hand here, meaning you are not allowed to believe what you want. And that also tells the population looking at him, because remember, he is also talking to people that are watching television. And so they are also instructed to look at his hand subconsciously or take notice of it subconsciously. And when he says you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here, he's saying with the 666 rule over your mind, you are not allowed to believe what you want. And that speaks to your subconscious mind and programs people to not think. And that's what it means all around and all together. That's what just happened. Any of them, but you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here. The issue well, is, is whether or not science. you, with your bizarre theories, are the best, I think you have the, the bizarre theory. You think it was 19 bucks? Okay, again, saying his issues, his views are bizarre, right? But the reason he puts up his pinky there is because that is the weakest finger that it would imply a small penis, uh, not a potent man, using that in reference to him, saying that he is impotent, that he is bizarre, that he is weak, and that he is of the pinky. And that's why he chooses, of all fingers and all gestures, to speak about his theories, he puts his pinky up. And these are all subconscious sorcery methods. Again, sorcery is not some guy wearing a magician's hat. Part of sorcery is speaking to and manipulating the conscious mind from the subconscious. Well, it's, it's a question of science. Not you, with your bizarre theories, are the best. Well, I think you have the, the bizarre most theory. You think it was 19 box guys with box cutters led by a guy in dialysis in a cave in, Afga in Afghanistan? That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next... See, all he can say is something to discredit him. I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. And then the people watching the televisions that say, yes, that must be weird. Twilight Zone music is weird. And the, the honest, incredible news reporter is saying that about him. Okay? Now, you see that all the neuro-linguistic programming is starting to get to the professor. He's starting to screw up his words. He's starting to screw up his concentration. He's mispronouncing. That's because there's a lot of negative energy being focused on him, interrupting his thought process. So you can see how he's starting to screw up his words, but he's still holding, you know, with all of that working against them and being unaware of those techniques, he still holds his own, but you start to see it get to him a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next question. The issue <laughs> okay, that is at hand here, you're entitled to have your opinion. I don't really care what you believe. But if we're talking about a captive group of students in a class... Again, making a bored face as if he's nothing. He's the pinky. He's lower than low. I really don't care what you believe. But if we're talking...